I'm the founder and director of Wakanda Pride. I led the product making company. So um, growing up, to be honest, I think I was literally just born an entrepreneur. Why? Because um, when real life hit, that's the first thing that came to my mind, being a girl child. I mean, I had options. I would have done something else, but I, um, I chose being an entrepreneur. I lost my parents when I was nine. I was taken in by some relatives from my father's side. Um, they took care of me up until I was O level. I wrote my O's and I passed. But uh, at that point, um, I had my little sister. We're three girls in our family. No, I'm the second child. I'm not really the oldest. But I had this responsibility of taking care of my little sister because at that time, we were split. She was staying at my mother's side and things weren't really going on well. Um, so I had to like take off the burden from my mother's relatives and take care of my little sister. At that point, she was going to form one. I was only 17. So I, I was employed. I was employed by a co-agency, VCA, at that time. Then... Um, because I couldn't afford a lot of things. I mean, the salary wasn't enough to take care of me, my little sister, take her through school, pay bills because we were now staying alone. Pay bills, her uniforms, and just, I mean, general life. So as I was going to South Africa, there were times where at the border, you know, uh, they would say, but you're a minor, where are your parents? You know, all of that. And somehow... <laughs> Coming to think of it, all the time I'll just cross. <laughs> Somehow, you know, I don't even remember how that, <laughs> that happened, but I'll just find help along the way, you know, one of that. So, yeah, I'll go to South Africa, get um, baby clothes from Small Street. From Small Street, I'll get baby clothes from um, Pip and all of those, you know little budget stores just so you know I can come back put a little muck up and it could make a difference so I'd make sure that after every two weeks I'd go to South Africa I get stuff come back sell sometimes my little sister because the schools that she was that she was going to at that time they would do hot seating you know hot seating is where sometimes you start you start school around 10 to 5, no, 12. They'd start at 12 to 5.20. Or you start in the morning, then finish around 12. So at the time, I got in a relationship. <laughs> I got in a relationship. And so my boyfriend at that time then started helping me with selling the stuff, you know, because I also didn't want to burden my little sister. I would try so much, you know, just so she doesn't fill the gap. So I'll try as much as I can to give my little sister this, this life that I couldn't even afford myself, you know. I just didn't want her to fill the void, to fill the gap that her parents are not here. My sister, even though, of course, to be honest, reality is sometimes you'd feel it because that's what's there. There's nothing that I can do, you know. Sometimes I'd even make her keep the money, you know, just to teach her responsibility, just to teach her that, you know, we work for the things we want yeah so that's like how i started entrepreneurship i started entrepreneurship because i didn't want life to be hard for us and also i just wanted to prove a point because remember i took my little sister when she was young and people asked me are you sure i, I had to be sure you know i had to be sure so yeah um how to kind of pride then started um, as I was doing that, that I had to drop this job, this VCA job. Why? Because it wasn't paying much. And now this whole um, important stuff started to do better than my job. Yet my job was taking so much time in my life. So I had to drop. I had to make a decision, you know. And then um, I chose this life.
then I went on and on and on with it. You know, it's not easy business sometimes. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Sometimes you question yourself, why did I even leave my job? At least I had a guaranteed um, financial security. You know, at the end of the month, I'm getting something. Unlike business where sometimes you don't even get the money. Sometimes you just have to struggle. Yet, um, I was I was sailing from Kwame Mall at that time. And you're thinking you need to pay rentals, you know, it wasn't much. I mean, I was sharing a table with someone, but I mean, still that money was so much to me. So in 2017, I met someone who was making shoes. You know, they were just making shoes. (laughs) Not really out of... Okay, they were just making shoes. So i found an opportunity out of that to be honest i was never growing up i always said i was going to be a lawyer that's why i even at one point i applied for law school at unisa but the reality is i could not afford you know i really wanted to but you know i couldn't afford at that time so i just had to drop the whole law thing and then um, that's when this Rukanda dream started. So when I met this man, I started, I didn't start with any money, to be honest, I always say this, not to sound like there's motivational speakers and all of that, but honestly, honestly, I didn't start with any money. So how I started is I was a middleman. Between this guy that would make the shoes, because I started with shoes only, and the customer so i would advertise market and all of that then i get the client i say you give me half deposit which is the principle was still used by the way even though now i own a workshop half deposit then half balance on collection so you'd give me your deposit i would use it as cost of production i'd pay this guy he makes shoes for me i deliver to the client the client gives me the balance that would be my profit so i had to save the profit grew i did not use the money well of course because i had responsibilities and bills and stuff i would use part of it but i would save most of it because i mean i started to enjoy this dream it then became a grown passion because our life i say oh i grew up saying i want to do leather or i want to do farming or i want to do you know I know I'm different. You'd never find me doing oh makeup and all of that. But um, for me to also say I grew up saying I want to do leather, I want to do farming, I want to do all of these things, I would be lying. It was a grown passion. I grew to love my business because it was giving me money. <laughs> even the challenges, even when challenges came, it didn't really pull me down or discourage me or all of that because I mean I grew to love it so um, in that is 2017 January 2018 then I registered the company um, I registered it is Rukanda pride it has always been Rukanda pride why because Rukanda means leather in Shona like if you go to Mashingo you know they have this demeaning kind of way they speak so Ganda, they call it Orukanda Uru. So it was more of like the pride we take in our African leather. That's where I derived the name from. I just had to be creative about it. But yeah, that's where Rukanda pride came from. So honestly, because I was just getting into the business, sometimes I didn't know how to do quality control. This guy would just make the shoes and give me, you know me being me sometimes because i didn't understand the processes of production sometimes you don't even package them well you just take them as they are sometimes you don't even oh i would polish i would polish just so they go looking shiny and stuff so i would polish my shoes make sure i go and deliver them sometimes from a plastic bag <laughs> so um i would get reviews sometimes stitches are not so straight sometimes you can see the glues yo yeah business is not easy and i would learn from that honestly 
of course there are times where i'd go home and cry because a client would say ah give me back my money i can't take this but some people actually to be honest they would feel sorry for me you know they would buy out of pity <laughs> or out of sympathy to say look she's trying you know because i would even get to around 3 a.m waiting for shoes sometimes at that guy's house at his veranda you know cold just holding my hand all of that waiting for shoes because in the morning i had to go to work this is when i was still at zimbrate in the morning i had to go to work and in the morning i'm supposed to meet up with clients who are supposed to collect their shoes so i had to wait you know and from Stungwiza. apparently um combis from Stungwiza don't really so i'll take a combi sometimes then from town to home out uh, that's when i did have to catch a cab because shoes then i started to grow i'll take those criticisms and i'll build from it i'll build from it i'll say okay last i'll go and tell him last time they said uh we need to do better on our shoelaces how about we try this how about you know that's how you actually grow a passion you know you start to research you start to learn you said now you want to know you know you want to know how it's done you want to know the kind of leather they're using because sometimes you get to a client they ask you what kind of leather is this you don't even know the name so i had to invest myself into knowing what shoe business is all about shoe manufacturing business is all about so from shoes now you get a person that says no but you gave me a shoe i need a matching belt and then i was like oh there we go we from shoes we started doing belts again then um it took me about a year doing shoes and belts shoes and belts, but shoes mostly i was very reasonable my prices were you know, very cheap <laughs> i can't even begin to think about it now yo know, what was i doing anyway um it's just because at that time i didn't understand running a business and maybe because i didn't have a lot of expenses at that time and like now where you have salary you have all of that you know it was just me and this guy i give him his money he gives me the product i take it to the client the client gives me the money i'm good you know i didn't have any taxes to pay nothing just me then i started um to get really into social media marketing but that also has its own consequences yo it has its pros and cons why i say that is because sometimes someone can just take the shoes they don't talk to you they don't complain to you and then you find their complaint on social media that's breaking that's heartbreaking that's demotivating i could say everything i remember at one time oh no it was at that time we were now making bags we were given an order of a bag <laughs> yeah and then the bag was just so flappy you know how a duffel bag is supposed to be stiff and it was so flappy like like a shopping bag or something like that and the client went to a page called name and shame and then they wrote through kind of pride this and that i remember crying so bad but that i had to give it back her money i had to learn from that and just do better from just having from just doing social media marketing and meeting a client in town to owning a shop i didn't understand a lot of things i didn't understand that when you're looking for a shop you're looking for something that's got traffic that's got parking that's got that's got security and all of that i just went in my sasa down there somewhere that's far from town somewhere that i can't even go you know i just went there because I was excited, I'd saved enough, you know, in my head I'm thinking just registering the company is enough. I go there, I put up a store, nobody came. 
for over a month now it started i was motivated because it's just like oh it's so new people are still getting to know about it and stuff but yo you would get one client in like two months yeah those are some of the challenges it broke my heart because you had to pay the person that was working in the store you had to pay the rentals and utilities and all of that i didn't understand a lot of things so um i had to close it no before i closed it actually i opened another one in blawai another challenge why because i didn't do market research I just went in Blawayo, I was like, another big city, let me open another store. I was over ambitious. Opened another store in Blawayo, it did not work out at all. The location was bad, as if I didn't learn from my first store. The location was bad, and Blawayo just didn't give me business to do. Maybe because um, we are at the border of Botswana. So, I didn't have much business. I felt like I would progressed, and now I'm back to the stage where... I'm meeting a client in town again and at that time I didn't even have a car so i would use public transport to go meet a client and you know sometimes clients think that you've got it all when you're just a small business they're expecting you to get there you know in a nice car dressed all nice and all of that then you sell them the product but sometimes reality is we don't even have those things so sometimes I would have to hire a cab just so i can go into the corporate world and show them my product and try and get business and all of that i remember where we have the store the rukanda pride store now this store i once came in 2018 <laughs> the owner always say that story in 20 2019 and i was looking for space and he gave me space and then in the morning he called me to say oh that space is taken by someone else I cried so bad in front of him. Like, I couldn't even control myself. I was so hurt. I felt like he just thought, ah, this child won't give me my rent or something like that. So bad. Anyway, um, yeah, those are some of the challenges. Before even opening my own workshop, understanding production. Because it's different having to just get a finished product and now getting into the processes of production from designing to the finished product it's a whole process that i had to understand through it was hard because now the salaries it was no longer just a person in the store now you have production team now you have to, the machines that needs to be serviced now yeah, it, it was just a lot just learning business really was just my biggest challenge learning because I did not have a, a background of it or all of that I did feel like giving up even though deep down I knew I was never going to because now I had a point to prove you know people were already calling me boss babe you know one of those but ah, you know when when clients would go on social media and complain and you know it would I would really feel like maybe i shouldn't maybe this is not my thing maybe i should just resort to getting clothes sell them you have no problems with that you know less problems and all of that i did feel like giving up um now that you know i've i've got my gut down with regards to the business i want my clients to have i always say a platinum experience when they buy our products you know we want them to feel like you you did the I don't want to say right thing because it's gonna sound cliche but I want them to have this experience that I bought a product with a lifetime guarantee considering we use real leather you know and it's customized you know in the shape that you want and the texture that you want i just want them to keep to have this bespoke feeling you know i got this and it's mine you know it's mine alone in as much as my products are proudly zimbabwean they're uniquely zimbabwean why because i've been in the importing business you know i understand that 
sometimes when you buy a piece of let's just say probably a wallet especially the important ones no offense but probably let's say from south africa and you're coming here to res resell i figured that you can literally see that wallet with i don't know how many people in town because almost every boutique every stall in the mall has that particular piece but when it comes to products that are locally made products that are handcrafted products that are you see this wallet this type of leather you can't find it with everybody in town you know it's something unique it's, so that's why I always go with uniquely Zimbabwean because it's not everybody that's got it unlike this type of leather this sometimes someone can't even differentiate between real leather and and um, imitation because I mean it's just, it just looks but when it comes to uh, products that are locally made from locally sourced leather you find that you've got choices you've got a choice in terms of texture you've got a choice in terms of color in terms of all of that so i mean that's why i had to choose something different something that's cliche that's not so cliche all right so my personal business card something that i've run with over the years is do it with passion or don't do it at all why um because if you are not passionate about what you are doing you'll probably fall because along the way if you're not passionate about it you're just gonna say you know what i'm done with this i don't have time for this you know so do it with passion give it your all you know sometimes you fall you have to rise up dust yourself go on and all of that if you need to take a break take a break but give it your all or don't do it otherwise along the way you're just gonna fail so when it comes to awards and recognition this being my recent one by the way from the Masado lead 30 under 30 top entrepreneur I think when it comes to awards and recognition I feel like they are uplifting honestly you feel like you, oh I'm in the right track you know to the point where I'm recognized locally regionally I've had a regional award and yeah it's just really uplifting and motivating and it just makes you feel like you're in the right direction it even feeds into your passion because now you feel like I can't give up I don't have a choice I have to keep going because now how many people am I inspiring you know besides people just being inspired I mean I have subordinates that look up to me you know them seeing these awards they feel like oh okay so we are in the right hands you know if she's being recognized it means we are doing a good job so yeah this really feeds into my passion it makes me feel like 